Hello, I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today. Welcome back to the education program that connects you to contemporary issues, people, and institutions involved in the world of higher education. Today's special show in Yerevan, Armenia, is thanks to Ararat TV, UDC TV, Georgetown University, and the American University of Armenia. Dr. Thomas Similian is Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences at the American University of Armenia. Tom is a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania and Harvard Law School. Narine Harapetian is a 2004 MBA graduate of the American University of Armenia. Narine is a communication strategist and executive director of FIDEC Armenia Foundation. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Well, delighted you both could be here. Tom, maybe if we could start with you. Uh, I wanted to start with your accent, because you sound a little bit like I do, and you grew up in the United States, but somehow you're a full-time dean here in Armenia. Maybe if you could say a little bit about how you got here and what AUA is. Sure. I um, actually do come from the same neck of the woods. I'm from, uh, uh, I was born in New York and raised in South Jersey. Uh, as you already noted, I went to the University of Pennsylvania, actually taught there for a while, um, just as you uh, believe. And um, I ended up in Armenia through a long journey. Uh, my first uh, interaction with Armenia was as a graduate student. I came here as, a, uh, as an IREX exchange student um, in 1979, so a long time ago. Um, well, it was still part of the Soviet Union. Um, and uh, I found it a very, very useful experience. It helped me with my language skills. It also helped me to understand this part of the world better. And I'm a strong believer in international education because of that. Um, I practiced law for a while uh, in uh, Washington and then Moscow and Kazakhstan and gradually began to pick up work here in Armenia and moved here. Uh, so that's how I ended up here. Uh, and uh, while I was here, I, was, uh, I started teaching at the university at uh, AUA where they just started an LLM program, a Master of Laws program. And I was an adjunct instructor uh, for a number of years in that program before becoming dean. So, Narine, so you were a student here, uh, so maybe if you could say a word or two about what you studied at AUA and how that's benefited your career. Uh, thank you, Steve, for hosting us today. Uh, I graduated from American University of Armenia in 2004 uh, from the uh, Business Administration School. Uh, I, I received uh, my deg MBA degree from, uh, as a marketing professional. Uh, I appreciate a lot uh, the education, the skills, and the knowledge AUA gave me as uh, it gave me very applicable, very practical skills that uh, I could be uh, prepared for entering the workforce of Armenia. Uh, when I graduated from my previous university, which is National uh, Institute of Economy, uh, I had lots of information about economics, uh, about the uh, the history and the theory of economy, but I was not sure whether I can apply it uh, when someone hires me. So AUA gave me very practical skills that today, until now, they helped me to manage a very uh, sustainable organization and bring social change to Armenia. Well, you mentioned the issue of practical education. Uh, I thought that that would be something that maybe, Tom, you could expand on a little bit. For an American student, who might be considering coming to the American University of Armenia, uh, would you say that AUA is a practical school? Is a student going to get practical skills if they were to come here from, let's say, the United States? Well, certainly we deliver practical skills, but our goal is we're a research institution as well as a typical liberal arts education uh, at AUA. We have an undergraduate program that develops uh, practical skills like communication skills and analytical skills and higher uh, thinking skills, higher order skills, um, but we also at the graduate level, and that's where we started, um, emphasized the kinds of knowledge and skills that are necessary in order to prepare a country uh, that is just re-emerged as an independent country. And this was when, the, when we used to refer to this part of the world as the NIS, the newly independent states. And that was when the, the university started. Uh, and the emphasis was, as Nadia has said, on giving people the kinds of skills and knowledge that would be necessary for a country that's re-emerging and integrating into the global economy. As you both probably know, I mean, this is a debate in the United States as well. Uh, so a lot of families uh, come to me and they, they, they say, well, I don't want my son or daughter to study something so theoretical 
because we're spending so many thousands of dollars and I would like my son or daughter to have something very practical that they can walk out of school with and then get a job. I assume that that same tension exists here in Armenia as well? People prefer uh, to have practical hands-on skills, but they, they also need to have some, uh, some skills that, way, that will help them to think in a certain way, to have uh, ethics, business ethics that will help them uh, to whatever they do in their life to uh, stick to those principles, those values, uh, and have something above the practical side of knowledge. I'd say our emphasis is on teaching people to prepare themselves for the rest of their lives. We never stop learning anymore. Um, so the notion that it's a finished product, I think, is, is, uh, is now out of date. Uh, we graduate from uh, university with uh, a certain skill set, a certain knowledge base, uh, and we continue to grow. And our goal at AUA is to prepare people to do both, both have something practical they can do when they first graduate, but also to continue to grow for the rest of their lives. And most of our students go on to further education. Uh, which is, I think, an indicator that we've succeeded in inculcating those values of continuing education. Fair enough. In terms of the American University of uh, Armenia, as I no doubt you know, there are other American universities around the world. How is AUA different or similar to the others? Well, we have the same name, American University. That's a good place to start. And there's an association of American universities uh, abroad. So the, we are part of that. Um, but we're not directly related to any of them. It's, this is a separate institution that was founded in 1991, right after Armenian independence. And I'll just take, to put a footnote here, one of the first things that Armenians seem to do as soon as they gain, regain independence, and this is the second independence we had in the 20th century uh, in Armenia, right after independence in 1918, one of the first institutions that was created was the State University. Um, Armenians value education, and one of the first things that happened when Armenia gained, regained independence in 1991 was the establishment of the American University as a joint uh, effort of the Armenian government, the Armenian General Benevolent Union, the AGBU, which is an, an almost century old or over century old Armenian benevolent uh, philanthropic organization, and the University of California system. Um, so um, we are different from the other AUs in that um, we uh, aimed to complement the local uh, offerings because Armenia already had a very strong uh, higher education system um, with specialized schools in various areas. But we looked for the specialties that were missing or that we thought that would be more useful as Armenia integrated into the global economy uh, and became a new democracy and uh, emphasized those. So you can see MBA, um, an interesting one that I, we didn't talk about but actually stems from a tragedy that took place in 1988 and was actually one of the the impetus behind setting up the university in some ways was the earthquake. We had a seismic engineering program uh, when we first started at AUA in 1991. Um, we also have a, an LLM program, which I've already mentioned, um, a teaching English as a foreign language program, because English became a very, very important skill that uh, students wanted to learn in Armenia and continue to. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and the effect that AUA has had, uh, having graduated so many teachers of English around the country in terms of uh, improving the quality of uh, English language instruction in the schools, which, and in Armenia, English is one of the three required languages in all the schools. Um, we also have a political science and international affairs program, uh, again, aimed to complement the existing university offerings. Um, and our emphasis has been on developmental and applied research. So right from the very start, our students and our faculty, which come from around the world, um, have um, been involved hands-on in developing new laws, new policies. Very exciting time and a very important institution in that way, even though it's a small institution. A little different from the typical American university and some of the other uh, more established countries. Do you think that had you gone to a school in Armenia as an Armenian American, mm -hmm. that you would have been the dean or does, is your American degree from an American univer a leading American university, did that help you where you are currently? It certainly helped. But we do have actually a dean. Our dean of, um, of uh, public health um, is uh, a, uh, one of our graduates, an alum, who actually did her advanced work here in Armenia first and then went on to a degree in the United States. The, um, 
having a degree from the United States, of course, is, a, is an important factor for, and having teaching experience in the United States is an important factor uh, in my own career, um, and also, I think, in the careers of many of our faculty. Um, although our faculty is much more diverse now, it's got students, we've got faculty from uh, Europe who've studied in Europe and also taught in Europe. Um, many of our faculty are what I call the local international faculty. We're very fortunate to have them 20 years, 25 years into independence. Fair enough. And Narina, in terms of this internationalization, uh, you embody that in some ways. Uh, I think it's uh, fair to mention that you and I met originally in Washington, D.C. through the Fulbright Association. So maybe if you could say a word or two about uh, how you got to Washington, D.C. And, and what you were doing there and, and why you decided to come to Washington in the first place. First of all, American University of Armenia prepared me for applying to another master's degree program and I was competitive enough based on my understanding of Western educational system. Uh, I chose to continue my education in Washington DC because uh, I had years of experience working as a communication profession professional in Armenia uh, without knowing any uh, fundamental things about communication, uh, without having theoretical background in that field. I was mainly applying my marketing skills I gained from American University of Armenia. So uh, I was doing pretty good, but I need something else. I, need, I needed uh, more strategic thinking to do uh, beyond what I know to do. Uh, so uh, I applied to the Fulbright program and uh, I was selected, uh, I was one of two finalists and it was the first time Armenia was having the Fulbright uh, at exchange program in the country, American exchange program, uh, after the Muskie Fellowship program quitted uh, this region. Uh, so, uh, I chose to be in Washington, D.C. Uh, because I wanted to be closer to the government agencies, to uh, top media companies uh, of the U.S. Uh, so, initially, I was placed in another place, in another university, but uh, fortunately, uh, I managed to convince the selection committee uh, uh, on my placement in Washington, D.C., and particularly in American University in Washington, D.C., because they were providing exactly what I needed. Uh, they were giving uh, a master's uh, uh, degree in strategic communication, which I believe uh, my country needs most. Uh, why I say uh, Armenia needs strategic communication professionals, because uh, I was dealing with most of the commercial banks, PR departments. I was working with the government uh, 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 from the perspective of World Bank in Armenia. And I noticed that uh, these organizations, these institutions do more rather than communicate about it. So miscommunication, lack of communication uh, leads to uh, dissatisfaction among local population. Uh, you can do a huge job uh, reforming uh, economic situation in the country, but when you uh, lack uh, informing your publics about what you did, what they achieved, uh, what you achieve, and uh, uh, what it will bring to them, what change they expect from your, your work, uh, you can consider that your work is not complete. That's a fair point. And, and speaking of communication, to an American audience uh, who's going to be watching this, what would you communicate in terms of the attraction that, let's say, an Armenian American would have to come to the American University of Armenia? Um, Tom, you can probably speak to that because you are one of those sure. uh, Armenian Americans mm -hmm. because many years ago you chose to, came here, to come here. But that's an unusual path. It's unusual but becoming more common. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually have students from the United States that are studying at the under, in, at the, in the undergraduate program, exchange students that come for either part of their junior or their uh, sophomore years. Um, it's a good opportunity, it's a good option where Western Association of Schools and Colleges accredited, that is US accredited, so all the credits can be transferred back very easily. Um, and it, it gives an added dimension, I think, both to uh, worldview and education. Uh, 
I'm not going to say that what we do in the classroom is so much different than what happens anywhere else in the world. Um, although I think we add, there's a, there's a special twist being in a country that's going through the kinds of transitions that we've gone through here. Our students are um, lively and interested in, in interacting uh, with uh, students from abroad. And uh, I know that our uh, faculty are very, very pleased to have them. So we encourage it um, and uh, the numbers are growing. Could you say a word or two about the University of California connection to AUA? Because I think uh, that may interest a number of viewers. Our faculty originally was drawn from the University of California system. and Our current president is actually a retired uh, professor of uh, engineering from Berkeley. Uh, and he was also one of the founders of the university. So our ties are very deep. Our uh, board of directors, or board of uh, trustees, I should say, is also drawn from uh, the universe has a number of members from the uh, University of California system. So they've given us a lot of gui guidance, know-how, um, and shared uh, their expertise in helping us develop our curriculum, build our library, and so forth. And speaking of the connections, what about the faculty connections besides the president? Um, so if I were a faculty member, as you alluded to before, I, I did teach at Penn quite a while ago, um, long before this show came into being. Uh, but let's say I was still mm -hmm. teaching at, at, on, the university, uh, on the university level, would I be able to come to AUA for a semester or a year and teach? Certainly, and we encourage it, and we're very, we're very fortunate to have visiting uh, faculty both during the school year and sometimes during the summer. We have a summer program as well, and, many, and this summer, for example, we're uh, uh, hosting a um, law program in human rights and also business law uh, with Southwestern University out of California. Um, a good example of the kinds of relationships we have. And we have memorandums of understanding with, um, I think, five or six California universities. So it's a direct connection in addition to our general relationship with the UC system. Um, we also have uh, faculty members from Europe that come uh, from time to time. Some give lectures, some give shorter modules for two or three weeks. Some come for longer periods of time for a whole semester. And we've had a number of Phil Fulbright uh, senior scholars and uh, exchange faculty over the years. Fair enough. And if we can move to the issue of alumni relations, uh, maybe Narina, if you can speak to what services, not to make this a consumer-oriented discussion per se, but uh, do you have access to an AUA website as an alumni, as an alumnus? Do you uh, get a magazine? Do you regularly get together with AUA alums in Armenia and elsewhere? Uh, the connection between uh, the alumni of AUA are very it's very strong. Uh, we receive very periodically, very regularly, uh, AUA newsletter updating on new features of uh, their programs, uh, about new programs offered as continuation to our education, and we have certain discounts uh, when applying to those additional continue continuous education classes. So we also uh, are subscribed to uh, receiving job announcements uh, and uh, we also intensively uh, use the career service office uh, to post our own announcement to recruit people from AUA. And how would both of you compare AUA to other universities in Armenia? It's different. It's unique. I can say it's advanced and uh, it's more Western uh, and it always provides very fresh and new knowledge to people who want to be on top uh, of their professions. Do you have something to add to that, Tom? Sure. You know, AUA was designed to be a, to complement the local system, which means we, we aim to have different things from the local system, um, both in terms of majors and specialties, but also in terms of teaching style. And I think that that's been our major contribution has actually been in teaching style, in the attitudes and the services that we provide students, uh, career advising. It's a worldwide network too. Our graduates, although about 70% are in Armenia, 30% are all over the world. And it's not, it's not unusual for AUA alums to run into each other in any number of European or other uh, capitals around the world. Uh, in the course of their professional careers at this point. So uh, it's an interesting network to be a part of, and I think that's also been uh, uh, an important factor for the university. And you alluded to the issue of the style of education. Um, as you well know, 
the, Ameri the view of, of American education is that we question things all the time, and that even though Professor Jones or Smith is speaking, that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't ask Professor Jones or Smith a question. Mm -hmm. uh, is AUA, does AUA carry that tradition forward? Absolutely. Critical thinking is one of the core values of the institution, and open discussion. And one of the things we've done, I think, as an institution has been a forum for uh, lots of discussions, not just within the university, but also in the community. Uh, and there are, this is a developing country that's got many, many difficult issues to tackle. Uh, and we have been open to those types of discussions, held conferences on almost all the important areas, whether it's economic development or public health, uh, legal development, um, uh, high-tech development and, and the introduction of more technology into government, e-governance. There's been a lot of uh, areas that we've worked on over the years, and AUA has been, uh, I think, a hospitable uh, host for these kinds of discussions. Um, we also do a lot of outreach to younger, to, uh, to high school students, um, and also to teachers in the high schools. And in terms of that outreach, do you do any outreach to poorer families in the rural areas throughout the country? Absolutely. AUA has got uh, an extension program um, that uh, has uh, offices around the country. Um, offers a number of different uh, programs for students in high school and also for continuing education for their parents. Uh, we also have the Turpanjin uh, Rural Development Program, which has uh, done two things. One, um, provided support for entrepreneurs and small business, and also um, provides a number of scholarships for students from other rural areas of Armenia. And do you have a thought or two about that, Narine, in terms of outreach that not only AUA is doing, but that AUA and other institutions are doing into the rural areas? Education is very important for rural people. Universities, uh, including American University, do a pretty good job uh, uh, bringing that information to people in uh, regions of Armenia uh, and uh, telling about the benefit of education, uh, how it can help uh, grow uh, from their reality, to change their uh, today's reality to something else, not to move to the capital city uh, of Yerevan, but uh, to create something that could benefit their community, their families, uh, where they are. Fair enough. And we only have a minute or two left, so maybe if I could ask both of you to, to kind of make a pitch, if you will, to an American audience to, to why they should come or send their students to study abroad here or you know, what, what are their tangible benefits that they're going to get. I don't mean to be so crass about it, but some people are going to be watching and saying this is an interesting thing, but there are great universities in the United States, there are great universities in the UK. You know, why should they come to AUA? I would recommend American uh, young people to come to AUA because, first of all, it provides the level of education they expect to get from American uh, universities. Second, uh, they would benefit largely from studying in Armenia because they will interact with Armenian people, will uh, learn uh, how to be hospitable and caring, uh, to have uh, the sense how Armenian people care about the families, how they care about uh, their guests, and uh, 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 mostly they will earn different perspective from the U.S., for example. Uh, uh, visiting different country, knowing different culture enriches people. So this would be a very uh, rewarding experience for them. Nari has done a wonderful job, I think, of, of uh, explaining from the student's perspective. I'll just add that uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for Armenian Americans to connect with their roots um, and for others who want to understand how a country that's going through this major transition in the, in the post-Soviet era finds its way into the global community. But specifically, can you just walk us through a little bit about so a student, a mom or dad is going to be concerned that they're not going to get credits or that they're, going to, they're scared that they're, going to, that they're not familiar with Yerevan. Can you explain a little sure. bit? Yeah, actually, Yerevan is a very safe city. Um, first of all, Armenia is a very safe country overall. Uh, there's very little street crime. Um, it's a very hospitable place, as Nadia already mentioned. Um, the cost of education is uh, very inexpex inexpensive, and the cost of living is moderate, I would say. Um, it's a safe place to study. Um, the um, credits are all transferable back to the U.S., as I mentioned. We're U.S. accredited, uh, which makes it easy for students to take, especially 
general courses um, back to their home university. Um, so it's a, it's a good opportunity to uh, be in, a, in an unusual place, a very ancient country, although we, we didn't talk much about that. The city of Yerevan is over 2,800 years old. Um, so there's a lot to see here, a lot to learn about um, in, in Armenia, and we welcome you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. If you would like additional information about Dr. Thomas Millian or Narine Hareptian, please visit aua.am. If you have comments or suggestions about higher education today, please send an email to our viewer mailbox at highereducationtoday at topcolleges.com. Thank you for watching. We will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world. Please join me again for another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.